completing a research paper can seem like a daunting task, but don't worry, I've got you covered. So I'm Sukriti Sekri. I'm in my final year of a PhD in marketing management at the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. And I've got five top tips on how to read a research paper effectively and efficiently. Back in my first year, it used to be quite a challenge to go through the papers. And I remember reading everything line by line, having to read it multiple times to understand and taking a lot of time just to go through one basic paper. Over the years, I've picked up these tips, which I'm going to be sharing now. And trust me, it does get better with time and practice. So believe in yourself, don't give up. It is not as difficult as it looks. My top tip number one is before getting into the nitty gritties and the details of the paper, do a quick flip through. What that means is suppose this is the paper we want to read, make sure to go over it at least to get a rough overview that okay, what all sections are there? What is the broad methodology looking like? What is the length of the paper? What are the subsections and so on? So if you recall back when we were in school and we had a chapter coming for the test, this would be what we would do usually is to, you know, do a quick skim or a scan of whatever we are supposed to read. This familiarizes us with the topic. Of course, now most of these things happen electronically. So just scroll through the paper and see what all sub parts are there to it so as to familiarize yourself with it better. So top tip number two is start with the abstract. So the abstract is like a mini paper. What that means is it contains all the important subsections of the paper. So there will be the main introduction or the, you know, the thematic background or the context of the topic. There will be the main research question that the authors are trying to answer. Then there will be what are the methods that have been used, broad overview of those. There will be the main findings and conclusions, and there will be contributions and implications of the same. So all of these are actually covered within just a small 200 to 250 word abstract. So that is really your best guide to the paper. You can straight off the bat tell whether the paper is appropriate for your work or not. Sometimes I may want to utilize a methodology in the paper and may want to cite that, use that and ad adopt that for my own work. At other times, I may be interested in the theoretical part of the paper. In certain other cases, I may be only interested in one or two key findings of the paper. So whatever intent you have, just make sure to read the abstract first to get a broad overview and then we get down to the next step. So tip number three is go to the introduction, but don't get lost. Go to the introduction with intent. What that means is typically each paragraph in the introduction is self-contained. It will be talking about one main thing. Try to determine what each paragraph is about so that you can save your precious time and just go over the main portions that you're interested in. For instance, there will be one paragraph in the introduction talking about the background of the topic. Then there will be a couple of paragraphs on the contribution of the paper, where that paper fits into the general conversation of the literature. So what you want to do is to create like a mental map of each paragraph so that you know which ones to skip, which ones to read in detail, and which ones to quickly glance over. Now, some papers also have a theoretical background and hypothesis section given separately. So what I like to do is look at each hypothesis and then look at the preceding portion to understand the logic or the rationale for each hypothesis. So rather than going into all the details and reading one to two pages and then coming to the hypothesis, it helps to see what are the three, four key hypotheses that the authors have talked about and then go backwards from there to understand their logic. Tip number four is don't get into the methodology section right now. First, go to the conclusion or general discussion or contribution section, basically the end portion, to get the key findings from the paper. Typically, authors also use either a numbered list or they put it paragraph by paragraph so that it's much easier to understand what is the broad contribution and the key ideas and insights findings from the paper. Tip number five, once you're familiar with this broad overview with hypotheses and conclusions drawn, then go to the methodology. And over there, my top tip would be start with the figures and the tables. So the figures and tables are there for a reason. They really help enhance readability. And at a glance, we can get so much information from them, after which you can then go, go into it step by step. For instance, if you're looking at an experimental paper, you can see that, OK, there are five studies. Study one has this, this purpose, and they are using this method, while study two is looking at, let's say, some other nuance of that, and so on. So now let's look at an example and see if we can apply these five top tips and steps to read a paper effic efficiently. 
This is a paper from Journal of Advertising by Deng et al., which I have just taken as an illustration. So the first step is to do a quick scan or a skin flip through of the paper. Let's see. So there are 21 pages as we can see. It begins with an intro section. I'm not getting into the details right now because this is just a scan to see what we are getting ourselves into. So we know the authors have done a good job of putting subheadings, which will help in our reading and understanding when we are going the para by para way. Then we see that there are certain hypotheses, which will again help us to understand the logic. Hypothesis one, two, and we have, an, I have a hypothesis three. Then we see that studies are coming in. So this is basically your method section, after which after which we see that there is a general discussion section coming in where they discuss the three studies or six experiments and talk about their contributions, theoretical and managerial. So they end with the limitations and future research and that's it, right? So just looking at this broad overview makes it less of a daunting task because we now know uh, the lay of the land. So after step one is over, we go to step two, which is taking a look at the abstract or mini paper and trying to find the different components of the paper at a glance. So the first thing is they set the context. They're telling us that, okay, we are taking China as a case example. We are exploring the downstream consequences of writing direction on time-related perceptions and so on. So basically this becomes the research question, right? This is what they are exploring using three studies. So we have a broad idea that, okay, their methodology encompasses three studies. We find that, and they have a lot of information on what they find. Further, you go down, you see, in addition, we demonstrate that. So all of these findings, demonstrations are nothing but your key insights or results from the paper, which you can go into detail. And then they talk about their contribution, that the findings enrich theories and implications of this particular topic. So this is the conversation or narrative they are adding to. So with very little time spent, we get to know a lot about the paper just by looking at the abstract. Step number three is looking at the introduction, but with intent. So we go para by para. We know that initial one or two paragraphs will just be about the background, which I may not be interested in. For instance, they talk about most written languages are such and such. In this research, we do this. So first para was just about the background, but over here they talk about what they are doing, which is their main research question, which we might want to slow down and read, right? Then we go to the next part. They talk about the several contributions they are making. Again, I may not be as interested in it right now because this is the authors telling us that they are doing very important work. We can skip for the time being. We can go on to the next sub part, which they have created. So we know that this portion will be talking about changes in writing directions. However, even if the heading hadn't been there, what we would have done is just look at the first portion of the para, look at the last portion and try to gauge what it's about, right? And see whether it's important for you or not. And we just do this step-by-step -step portion until we get to hypothesis. So suppose I see this hypothesis, if I understand it well and good, if I don't go back one para and then just see what is the logic or rationale they are applying that we propose this, this happens because, and we get to know the rationale, right? Next, I'm planning to go to hypothesis number two, which is over here. I'll read the detail. And then once I know, once I have that fitted in my brain, I'll go back and look at the rationale they apply. Similarly, for hypothesis three, we skip this whole literature for the time being. We look at hypothesis three, and then I can go back and kind of do a quick skim and understand why they have pitched for that hypothesis to be true, right? So this completes our step number three. Going on to step four, we will skip the method for the time being. We'll move to conclusion and discussions and all of that good stuff, right? So here's the general discussion. Now, again, paragraph by paragraph, they would have created very nice summaries. So across three studies, we established this, this, this. These are the main findings. And they have done a study by study breakdown as well, that in study 1A, we talk about this, while 1B talks about this and so on. Looking at theoretical contributions, they have given us a numbered list. First, we have done this. Second, we are looking at this. And then finally, we are doing this. So this really helps us to understand uh, what the contributions are in a nutshell. Then in managerial implications, again, the authors have made it simpler for us by providing first, second, and third. 
If they haven't, we can still look at each paragraph and typically it will have one major point per paragraph if it's a well-written paper. Then we can look at limitations or we can leave it for the time being, now go back to methods, which is the fifth and final point where we will start with the figures and tables, if any, because that helps with a better understanding. So let's go back to the method. So I can see that study one does not have any tables, so I will have to read it. But again, authors have broken it down for us by providing the main objective of the study. Then we can move to the design. So broadly, if I know experiments, I'll know what this means, right? Uh, we know the number of participants, then we can see the procedure that they've used, right? We move to the results and study one B comes in. Similarly, we go through the other studies. Now, In the next study, they've given us this figure, which really helps us to understand what is happening at a glance that, okay, they have these two types of brands, they have these two types of writings, and what is the trend showing us? So this is how I would suggest you get into understanding the studies is by first looking at the figures and then going to the written portion. And with this, we complete the quick and efficient way of reading a paper. Now, of course, if you want to prepare it for uh, understanding better in a class, or if you're wanting to read it in depth, I would suggest that after following all these steps, then you go sequentially and read it line by line for a better and more solid understanding. So this was my quick guide and five top tips to reading a research paper. Hope you liked it. Are there any other methods or tips that work for you when you're reading your research papers or any other difficult reading material? Then please share that in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching.